I lived in a community where there was about 30 boys that went into the service. My brother Bill, he, he wanted to go in so bad. He was in the Air Force along with my other two brothers. They were in the Air Force also. They were all three pilots. He uh, went over to the South Pacific. On the mission that he went on, he got shot down. On Christmas Eve, we got the message. And Bill was killed. It's a beautiful thing to know, even though in the midst of sadness and despair, that your loved ones perished so that we might have the freedoms we have. I would like to express my thanks to all the people all the, the, the men and women that have served our country and have perished so that we might have the freedoms that we have today. Hello and welcome to Thomasville First United Methodist Church. My name is Floyd White. I'm the church administrator here. And before we begin our worship service, I wanted to take a moment to lift up those that we celebrate this Memorial Day weekend, uh, those who gave the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms. Let's go to God in prayer. God, we thank you so much uh, for those folks who did give all for our freedoms, that we may gather together today in worship of you is a result of their sacrifice. So we celebrate them and we lift them to you today. God, we also lift up their families, those folks who have been affected most uh, by their loss. God, we lift them up to you and pray that you would provide the care that only you can. God, remind us uh, today how uh, precious life is and how precious our freedoms are. We thank you for our country and lift it to your care as well. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Uh, today is also, uh, typically this time of year, I guess, is also a time where we celebrate our high school seniors and the milestone of their graduation. Uh, so you'll hear from Drew and Amanda shortly as we celebrate them. Uh, today you'll also hear at the end of our service from our administrative council chair, uh, Mr. Jamie Thompson, who has some news regarding our June uh, reopening date or restart date for our in-person services. So you'll want to hang on for that. Hi, I'm Amanda West. This is Drew. We're the Directors of Youth and Outreach, and we're excited to have an announcement for you about our youth. We would like to take some time to honor our seniors. Normally, if we were having regular church, you would get to see them walk down the aisle in their cap and gown, and they would tell us their name and, and where they're graduating from and what they're doing next. This year, we've decided to do a senior spotlight. So you've seen on the Facebook throughout the month of May during the week, we've highlighted a different senior every day. So we've put together a slideshow with those senior spotlights and you'll get to watch that after our announcement. And if you know any of them, it'd be great if you could um, give them a great congratulations. 
We also have another announcement about our scholarships this year. We got to award four scholarships, and Drew is going to tell you more about them. Yes, yeah, so we have four uh, scholarship recipients this year. Um, the four scholarships that we give out each year here at TFUMC are the Dormany Scholarship, which goes to uh, a guy and a girl. We have a scholarship um, that is in honor of Jeff Loftus. And we have a more general scholarship um, provided by just donations of people in our congregation, which we'll just call the TFUMC Scholarship. Um, so this year, we uh, the four recipients are Spear Salea, who will be receiving the Jeff Loftus Scholarship and the uh, Dormany Scholarship. We have Lexi Knapp, who will be receiving the Dormany Scholarship. And then we have Witt and Emmy Hayes, who will both will be receiving the TFUMC Scholarship. So congratulations um, to all of you, and to congratulations to all of our seniors. Um, we're proud of you, and we know this has been a difficult time for you, um, but we're here for you, we're praying for you, and we wish you all the best.
Now let us say together the affirmation of our faith from the Apostles' Creed in your hymnal number 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. As we come now to our prayer time, pastoral prayer time. Uh, we need to remember all those who are curtailed by the COVID-19 virus and the businesses that are suffering, those people, the employees, and uh, be mindful of that, and those who are sick and those who are first responders. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that we're still, as we're even opening up, we're still in the midst of a pandemic worldwide. And we ask that you, Lord, be with those who are sick and their loved ones, that you might minister to them and make them sensitive and ease their fear and let them know you love them and have your Holy Spirit touch them. Ask you to be with the doctors and nurses and all those EMTs who are rushing people and caring for people and they have all the regular duties and the regular problems with people with heart conditions and blood pressure and accidents and then also those who are sick with this. We know that we're not in a hot spot, but 
just north of us in Albany is a hot spot, and there are others throughout this country and the world. We have to be with the doctors who are working on tests and also working to manufacture it, get those up to speed, and we know some areas have more tests than they need and others don't have enough that they might sort that out and be with those doctors, multiple doctors in multiple places in multiple countries who are working on a vaccine. Normally we are told it takes anywhere from a year to three years to come up with a vaccine for a new disease and we ask you to be with them that it might come quicker than that where people feel safe and secure but we ask that you might ease the panic among people as long as they take reasonable precautions and washing hands and distancing and wearing a mask when in public that might minimize the spread of this disease. I ask the Lord to be with our firefighters and law enforcement who are also dealing with this on top of their regular duties and we ask you to protect them. I ask you to be with the EMTs and protect them and I ask you to be with all those who are at home with the kids because there is no school and we, they've been with them for weeks and we ask you to be with them, especially as employers start opening up and some might have to go to work and child care will be an issue. I ask, Lord, also that you'd be with our church members, that they might be patient as we move to open up because we don't want in any way to be a source of spreading this disease. And Lord, we ask to be with our political leaders. They might make the right decisions in all the different states and different countries as they open up and be with Christian leaders as they try to care for people and help the sick and feed those who are hungry. That they might make the right decision. And now, Lord, we praise your Son, taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
During this time in our service, we give you an opportunity to worship in the form of an offering. There are several ways that you can give at Thomasville First United Methodist Church. Of course, you can uh, bring by your offering to the church office at 425 North Broad Street. Uh, of course, you can mail in your offering, if you would like, to P.O. Box 975 here in Thomasville. That's area code 31799. Uh, but we also have some other ways that you can give. You can give online right now through our website at tfumc.com. Click on the Give button in the top navigation bar and you will be led uh, to a page that will guide you in the process of giving. Uh, you can also give right now on your smartphone. If you'll open your messaging app and text the message TFUMC Give to the number 73256, you will receive a response that will guide you in the process of giving. All right, let's go to God in prayer. Uh, God, we celebrate your provision, your faithfulness in providing all that we need. God, we thank you for that, your generosity. God, we pray that you would help us be generous people, that you would help us be good stewards of all that you've given us. Use these gifts now of our offerings and our tithes. Use them for your kingdom. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now come to a time of, of the word, the written word, and then the spoken word. Uh, again, we're looking at Jesus as he goes to the cross, and he's trying to prepare his disciples then and explain to them what's really going on, that they can understand it later, and for us today, that we can fully understand what he did at the cross of Calvary, and then the resurrection, and then the ascension, and the second coming. He's coming back. Let's pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, as we look, listen to your word read, may you illuminate to our heart and mind and our very soul what you want us to hear as individual Christians and as individual Christians who are part of the community of faith, the church, that we might be more like what you want us to be. It's in your Son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Uh, we're looking at John's Gospel again, chapter 17, verse 1 through 11. And some of you, if you're looking on in your Bible, it'll say the high priestly prayer. Jesus spoke these things, lifting up his eyes to heaven, and he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that he, your Son may glorify you. Even as you have given him authority over all flesh, that to all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on the earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I have with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you gave me out of the world, and they were yours, and you gave them to me, and I have kept your word. Now I had to come to know that the, everything you have given me is from you, Father. For the words which you gave me, I have given to them, and they received them and truly understood that I came forth from you, and they believed that you sent me. I ask on the behalf of, I do not ask on the behalf of the world, but of those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all things that are mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. I am no longer in the world, and yet they themselves are in the world. I come to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name, the name which you have given me, that they may be one even as we are one. Dynamic Christians know God through Jesus Christ. Dynamic Christians know God through Jesus Christ. Jesus has moved, earlier he was praying as future events, and now he's praying like that all that he has done, come to do has been fulfilled. Now, it hadn't physically been carried out yet, but it's about to be. He's about to be betrayed. He's about to be tried in a sort of what we'd call a kangaroo court, maybe. He's about to be crucified. He's about to be buried in the third day. He's resurrection from the dead and spends 40 days with him, and then he ascends to the Father. And he's saying, God, I'm coming to you. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that your Son may glorify you. We sometimes don't realize it. We just think the resurrection God is glorified, but he's glorified at the cross because Jesus did the work that God asked him to do. He is a sacrificial lamb, the Paschal lamb without blemish. And he paid the price for all of our sin, all humanity's sin. And he tells us, this is the eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Huh. Oh, but that's verse 3. But in verse 2, listen to what verse 2 says. Even as you gave him authority, your son, that his son may glorify you, even as you gave him authority over all flesh to all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. All flesh, all humanity. Jesus is over all humanity. And the Father gave him that authority. And this is eternal life, Jesus says in verse 3, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus whom you have sent. The only way to the true one true God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, is through Jesus Christ. He's the one that God sent to redeem humanity. And notice what Jesus said. This is eternal life, that you may know you, the only true God. And when he says know God, he's not talking about mental knowledge. There is a God off there somewhere. But they know, we know him through Jesus Christ, who came and lived and died a sacrificial death, was resurrected from the dead, lived with the disciples, and then was ascended and says, I'm coming back. We say that in the Apostles' Creed, the second coming. He's coming back. And eternal life is to know the one true God, and we get to that one true God through Jesus, and knowing God is more than mental knowledge. We have experienced him through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit convicts us of our sins. 
And then we have a choice because we believe in free will. We once were convicted of our sin, no, we can do nothing about it. We can choose God or we can choose to stay in our sin. And Jesus says, I'm going to give eternal life to all those you have given me. The Father's in charge. And the Son did what the Father wanted him to do. And God was glorified in that, and Jesus, God the Father, and Jesus says, glorify me that I might glorify you, Father. We know as believers through Jesus Christ is our only way to the one true God. I had a doctor that used to ask me, he was Methodist, and I'd go in for something, my annual checkup, and his nurse always got mad at me because he would talk to me theology for 30 or 40 minutes. And one day he finally hit me with, he said, James, you don't really believe that Jesus is the only way to God, do you? And I said, yes, I do. I've staked my life on it. And he said, well, that's because you're a preacher. I said, no, I staked my life on it long before I ever thought about being a preacher. When I became a Christian, I staked my life on that. And then he tried to tell me Jesus never said he was the only way. I said, have you ever read John's Gospel? Chapter 14, chapter 17, it's full of it that he is the only way to God. John wrote the book with the emphasis we call the Gospel of John. John wrote that book inspired by the Holy Spirit, hence inspired by God, to present evidence that Jesus is the Messiah and the way to God. The long way to the Messiah of the Jewish people. But he wasn't just for the Jewish people, he was for all humanity. And Jesus makes it clear, he is the way. When he says only, he means only way to the Father, the one true God. He's not a God number two. We don't have three gods. We have one God. Notice he says, I want them to be one. We're going to get to that in more detail in a minute. As we are one, Father, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they are one. We don't quite understand how they do that, but we accept it by faith. We don't worship three gods. We worship one God in three persons. And knowing God is not just knowledge about who he is, but we experience him through Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit to come into our heart and reside with us and live with us. It's a relationship. It's not just some rules and guides and religious beliefs, it is a relationship with God the Father established through the Son and His atoning work on the cross of Calvary. That's at the heart of Christianity. And Jesus makes it plain here. He did what the Father wanted Him to do. And that glorified the Father. Earlier in chapter 15 he said, if you love me, you'll do what I say to do. His example we have is Jesus Christ. He did what the Father asked him to do. But just as dynamic Christians know Jesus Christ for eternal life, dynamic Christians united through the power of the Holy Spirit. Dynamic Christians, we are united through the power of the Holy Spirit. Notice Jesus said, I want them to be one as we are one. Verse 8, For the words which you gave me, I have given to them, and they received them and truly understood that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I ask on their behalf. I do not ask on behalf of the world, but those whom you have given me, for they are yours, and all things that are mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified out of them. The ones who have been given them. We don't really understand what it means. It means the Father gave him those who were going to believe. He knew who was going to believe. We're not those who believe in double predestination. Some are predestined for heaven and some are predestined for hell. But God knows the future. God knows who's going to choose him and those he gave to Jesus to give eternal life. Remember, what we call time is a human construct. God is eternal. 
Time means he's outside of time. Don't quite understand that, but I do. He's not limited like we are limited. Verse 11, I am, Jesus said, I am no longer in the world, and yet they themselves are in the world. And I came to you, Holy Father, keep them in your name, the name which you have given me, that they may be one even as we are one. We're to be one in the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. When we call ourselves Christians, we are to be one. When we call ourselves brothers and sisters in Christ, I sometimes sign my letters or cards, your brother in Christ. That's a strong bond. We're brothers and sisters in Christ with people on other continents. We're united by the power of the Holy Spirit. We're united because we know God through Jesus Christ. And that unity is greater than anything that might divide us. The world, Satan, might use to divide us. I get so tired of people saying, well, the young folks want this and the old folks want this. We are the people and the body of Christ Jesus. Doesn't matter how old you are. Doesn't matter if you're male or female. Doesn't matter... If you're young or old, rich or poor, none of that matters. None of that is as significant as what unites us. We're the body of Christ Jesus. There's a book about the body, one body, and it's talking about the fact that sometimes we have distorted that because we do single adults over here and children over here and we do youth over here and we don't want children to disrupt our worship service and youth camp they're bored by the worship service and and i'm like really we're the body of christ there's nothing wrong with us all worshiping together i know some young children the parents couldn't pay attention because they'd be crying i understand nursery children but the one body is a concept that we're the body of Christ and the church should worship together, not always be separated. There are churches where they, youth have a separate building and never come to worship with adults. How are they going to know what adult worship is? And I've had parents come to me and they say, well, you know, we need something for the youth doing worship hour because they get bored I said okay and they don't really like to come and I say well do they like to go to school all the time I'm not saying they have to come to a structured traditional service but at times we're to worship as the body of Christ I know this might shock some parents but once you've been through confirmation and you accept Jesus Christ you and ask for church membership you're a full member of the church And you say, well, 16 is too young to be a member of the church. I said, it's not too young to drive, evidently. And I bring this up not to try to parent or tell you how to parent, but we, the church, at times need to all worship together. That's one thing I like here. We don't have worship for youth opposed to worshiping with the congregation. We have a contemporary service. Some youth come to that. Some come to the traditional service. And I say that not to pick on the youth. We have families with their children in worship. No, they're not always getting the full message. I got news for you. The adults always don't get the full message. I don't always get the full text. But we have a children's moment. We do children's church, not just to entertain church, but to teach them about Jesus. We're to teach them the songs. And from what I've experienced, most youth enjoy contemporary worship. Not all, but most. They worship with us at Camilla. They work with us at Bemis. They worship with us here. And I say this not to bring dissension, but to realize that we're one body. I don't care what your ethnicity is. I don't even care what your language is. I preached where there were four, well, three translators going on. Because we had four languages that were understood there. I probably bored him to death because 
the translators would get mad at me because they said I talked too fast, so I had to slow down. But I bring this up to say what unites us is the knowing God, and then we're united through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is desiring we be one like him and the Father are one. We might have differences of opinions about things, but we're the body of Christ. I've seen churches split over the color of the new carpet. How ludicrous. That usually has nothing to do with the color of the carpet. It's about a power struggle in the church. We're to be united in Christ Jesus, and that's more important than young and old. People tell me as young people, they value their grandparents. Then why can't a child value a 90-year-old that's not biologically related, but is stronger relationship to the blood of Jesus Christ? They're a part of the body of Christ. We, the church, have the mission to minister to every child and youth that are in our way of helping that we can help. Good Samaritan story. I had the privilege of pastoring a church where people had the heart felt for these children that the parents didn't bring to church and the parents said it was okay and we brought them to church and we taught them and I had church members to complain about those children and I said, we're teaching them about Jesus. And when they reached a certain age, we had them in the congregation and some of the parent, people that didn't have children fussed about how loud they were and I said well why don't you go down there and sit with them and encourage them to be quiet and listen to the music I had a group of about six or eight men and women all I had to do was call a first name and they knew where the noise was coming from and they'd go ease in and sit with them sit between them were people that couldn't sit beside each other without causing a scene you know if you've had two children you know what that's like he touched me. He looked at me. We're one body in Christ Jesus. We work together to bring glory to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Once we're believers, it's not about us. It's about Almighty God. And we, the church, can never forget that. It's about God. And when we minister to somebody else, it's in the name of God to bring glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Not to us, not to the church, not to our denomination. It's to bring glory to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. By the way, that's what worship is about, God. He deserves our worship all the time, 24-7. I hear from you that you miss being here. Well, let me tell you, the staff misses seeing you. It seems like years, and I know it's only been weeks and months since I've seen some of you. I run into you in town. We ran into Diane and I were shopping Saturday. We ran into several members at Walmart, and we talked. We all had our mask on, and we talked. We didn't get too close, but we talked. Sometimes it's hard for me to recognize who you are, and you... You might have to speak to me because I'm not used to seeing you with a mask. Y'all probably think I look better with a mask because it hides some of me. It's strange. I've told some of you preaching to an empty sanctuary is a little challenging. But I've gotten used to it. The worst part is I can't move. Y'all probably happy I can't move. But we miss y'all too. There's something special about drawing together, but we're not going to rush back into that. I don't want the church to be a source of spreading COVID-19. I don't think any of y'all want that. The staff has been very good, and we've had volunteers. We got Katie filming again today. to do all this work that takes it to be done. And Tim's busy recruiting more volunteers. Well, we're going to keep this on. Once this, five years from now, we want to be streaming live. And it'll be up still on Facebook and YouTube where you can watch it later if you miss it live. But we want people to see what we do in worship. 
We have people watch us that aren't members that aren't even in town. That's a good thing. We're the body of Christ Jesus, and what unites us is far greater than anything that divides us. We, the church, cannot function if we forget that. Well, we can't function the way God wants us to. Do you understand what Jesus has asked the Father to do to give us the oneness that he and the Father and the Holy Spirit have? To be one like we are one. And Jesus tells us in this passage that he wants to be one with the Father like he was before the creation of the universe in this passage. He longs to be back with the Father. But he doesn't want to leave us alone. He wants to leave us knowing that we're one or to be one through the power of the Holy Spirit and the knowledge of the one and only true God. And he tells us that gives us eternal life. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity that you have prepared this word for us, this written word, and protected it for 2,000 years. And we're thankful. Lord God, maybe your spirit spoke to someone and they need to pray for someone else or maybe pray for themselves or maybe pray for themselves and someone else or maybe they were convicted they're not a believer yet they don't know jesus christ they might turn to him right now through the power of your holy spirit and say lord i want to turn from my sin and turn towards you and i want to be one with you the one true god and they might make that decision in prayer and turn to you now or maybe your holy spirit has laid on the heart of someone they need to call or they need to contact or they need to send a note or an email or text because they might be lonely or they themselves might be lonely and they might reach out to someone because we do care. We just sometimes get busy and forget to call or write people. Lord God, as we sing, may you lead people in the way that they need to glorify you. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.
His body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, and up from the grave he rose again, and as he the power of Christ in me from life's first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny no power of hell no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns As we've uh, come to the close of the service, I'm going to give a closing prayer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask your blessings upon these people each morning of the week as they get up that you remind them how much you care about them and want to, and love them and want to bless their lives and that you want to bless someone else through them this day, every day of their lives. And as they come to the time of getting prepared for bed and they go to bed, may you remind them how much you love them and care about them and how they are united with every believer in the world through their knowledge of you, the one true God, and through the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit, we are one in the power of the Lord. It's in your Holy Son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hello, my name is Jamie Thompson. I serve as the chair of the Administrative Council here at Thomasville First United Methodist Church. I'm here today to bring you a message. Uh, I want to let you know that the Administrative Council met uh, and we voted on having an opening of the Thomasville First United Methodist on June the 21st. Um, I know that we sent out a date of June the 28th. Um, some discussions took place with staff and lay, lay people here at the church, and uh, we feel that we can uh, have a, an opening on the 21st to help facilitate a better experience on the 28th, to be honest with you. Um, there's some things that we need to work out uh, as far as seating, as far as uh, safety protocols, um, and we, we want to do that on the 21st. We'll ask, there'll be some logistics that'll come out on how we're going to do that, but you can look forward to that um, news coming from the church. Um, we want you to know that the 21st, the 28th, the middle of July, no matter uh, what date it is, if you don't feel comfortable, if you're a person who is at risk, if, you, um, if you'd rather continue your experience at home, with the great job that our staff has been doing with delivering that message online, that service will continue. Um, we're even looking at having live streaming of the service. So it'll actually be an enhanced service at home. Um, and, and we promote that. If you don't feel comfortable, then by all means stay at home until you do. Uh, the church is here for you. Um, all you have to do is call the office. You can speak, speak to a staff member. Um, again, I'm here today just to let you know that the uh, opening date changed from the 28th to the 21st uh, has been uh, voted on by the admin council and we're excited uh, to begin phase one of the church opening.